Hello, fellow humans, and welcome to another Fallout 76 Dev Dive, where we chat about upcoming features with members of the development team. This time, we're going to be taking a look at our otherworldly Invaders from Beyond update, which will arrive in the live game on March 1st. This time, I'm joined by regular humans, Ellis and Bo. Can you guys tell us a little bit about yourselves and what you do for the game? Hey, uh, I'm Ellis. I'm a senior quest designer at Bethesda, and I worked on the Invaders from Beyond event. Hi, I'm Bo Buchanan. I'm the Fallout Worlds lead at uh, BGS Austin. So, Ellis, let's start with you. The Invaders from Beyond update is going to be bringing a new seasonal event to Appalachia. What can players expect? They can expect a seasonal event similar to Night of the Moth. Um, but in addition to that, it's a little bit more of a total world invasion. So this event can take place at six different locations across Appalachia. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have three other existing public events where aliens are going to be taken over, um, where they usually wouldn't be. Um, and we have a variety of sort of random encounters that you can you can encounter as you're venturing across the world um, that may have some aliens or Brahmins or other things. So Ellis, you mentioned aliens. Uh, what all are we going to be experiencing during the Invaders from Beyond event? Can you walk us through that? Yes, so first you're going to see a really cool UFO descending over the event area. Um, you're going to see the weather change uh, to sort of a quantum storm. Uh, it'll be blue and, and lightning bolts and everything uh, since there's a disturbance in the atmosphere. Awesome. Um, and there are some brainwave siphons placed in the area by the aliens, which are sort of pulsing and gathering brainwaves from nearby life forms. Um, and gathering data on them, which obviously nobody gave the, per the aliens permission to do that. Um, so your goal is to sort of fend off the aliens that are teleporting down from the UFO um, and destroy those siphons. Um, and you will also hear a mysterious benefactor who calls himself Homer coming in over the radio to sort of give advice and instructions uh, throughout the event. Um, and as it goes on, the intensity and the difficulty and the chaos will sort of ramp up a little bit as you have uh, different types of aliens coming out to defend their siphons and also missile strikes coming down from the UFO. Brainwave siphons, huh? I, well, I feel like everyone who wears a tinfoil hat may have been onto something. So you mentioned aliens. Are there different types of aliens? What are the enemies that we're going to be facing during the Invaders event? Uh, well, we have the base aliens that you already know about, um, but they also can have poison or cryo weapons now. Uh, in addition to them, we have the flying drones, which are sort of a lighter enemy type, um, and the heavy invaders, um, which I think are pretty cool and funny because uh, you have a little Zayton guy at the top sort of like controlling the mecha suit. Um, so if you ever happen to get up close to them and see them, that that's something fun to look at. I think they're they're cute. Cute and deadly. Yes, cute and deadly. <laughs> <laughs> so why did we decide to go with uh, an alien themed seasonal event? Uh, what can we do to learn more about them, where they come from, and what they want? Uh, I feel like the aliens have always been sort of a developer favorite. Uh, we've always wanted to do something with them in 76, so I'm glad that we got the chance to do something big and cool uh, this time around. Um, and what we do know is that they're doing research, right? They're gathering those brainwaves. Um, we don't necessarily know right away why, um, what, what they're going to do with the data that they're gathering. But if you want to know more, uh, there is a way to speak to Homer outside of the event. Um, I won't spoil that since he likes his privacy. Um, but if you want to seek him out, I do suggest uh, seeking out the random encounters um, because there may be something you can get from those that would help you find him. So you also mentioned public events. How else is Invaders going to be affecting the game beyond the main seasonal event where there's the mothership and the lasers and the aliens and the drones? Yeah, um, so there are the random encounters that I've mentioned that can happen across the world. Um, and then there are three other existing public events that the aliens will be taking over. Um, 
I want y'all to discover what they are. Um, so I won't spoil all of them, but uh, I will say that there is definitely something new in Campfire Tales. There is actually a third ending to that event that Ooh. was part of the original design, uh, but at the time we weren't ready to release it. So I'm glad that we are able to release it now uh, because it's a perfect addition to the rest of the Invaders festivities. So we know that Invaders from Beyond is going to run for two weeks. What about after the event comes to an end? Are we going to continue to see aliens in Appalachia? Uh, I would say that these otherworldly beings are a little hard to predict. Um, so anything's possible. Uh, I would uh, encourage y'all to enjoy the festivities while they're around. But our current plan is that they would come back at some point um, for another seasonal event and another seasonal brainwave siphoning. Um, so if you enjoy the event, please let us know. Awesome. Well, it wouldn't be a seasonal event without some awesome rewards. What can you tell us about the types of things we can get our hands on by completing Invaders? Uh, so there's the Alien Souvenir Beer sign, similar to that, that we have for our other seasonal events. Uh, we have some other alien-themed workshop items, like a stash box and uh, an alien in a tube. Um, and we have some new weapons that you can acquire as well. Uh, one is the Electro Enforcer, which is a new melee weapon. Um, and also the Alien Disintegrator, which is a new energy rifle. And those are really cool. Definitely. Uh, folks in the PTS have been using the Alien Disintegrator to drop just about anything that walks in their path. I think a lot of people are excited about those new weapons, particularly. So um, it's going to be fun to see everyone get their hands on them with this patch. Yeah. Um, during the development of Invaders from Beyond, did you have any sort of interesting experiences or fun stories from creating the event? Um, I think the funniest stories come from when I was very first implementing it. Um, and I was spawning in the alien creatures that we already had like existing in the editor, um, but we weren't using them for anything. So like, nobody had had looked at them to make sure that they're functioning properly yet um and so there were a lot of funny bugs with them they would they would get crippled and like lay on the floor um but their hitbox was still standing so you could just shoot at the air above them to hit them um they would run out of ammo after shooting like 10 times and then sort of just stand there not knowing what to do um and then the worst thing was every single one of them was equipped with an alien blaster, uh, which has a very distinct sound effect. Um, so if you can imagine like 20 aliens all in the same area, like pew pewing with their alien blaster at the same time, uh, very cacophonous. And that was that was the state of the event for a little while in the beginning. Definitely going to need to crank down the volume on that one. <laughs> I'm glad that they have more weapon weapon types now and they are a little more diverse in that way. So aside from the Invaders event itself, we're also making some improvements to Fallout Worlds in this patch. Bo, what can you tell me about how we're changing player progression in Fallout Worlds? Yeah, so when Fallout Worlds was released, um, a lot of players were very interested in it, but hesitant to kind of stop their main progression in the game um, to spend a lot of time in it. So I'm excited to announce um, with this new update uh, we are going to add the ability to earn score while in a Fallout world. Um, so whether you're playing on your a, a public world or you're playing on a private custom world with your friends, you will be able to complete the daily and weekly score challenges uh, and earn score. And everything that you do in that world will go and progress your season normally. Uh, we are going to disable one of the score challenges, which is the endlessly repeatable XP reward. Um, that one you'll only be able to do in adventure mode, but all the rest of the daily and weeklies you will be able to complete inside Fallout Worlds. Uh, we think this is a good balance um, for players of being able to still have some progression. A lot of players were um, clamoring for the ability to earn score um, while we look at other things we might be able to do in the future. Um, so hopefully this gives everybody the chance to come and experience it without feeling like they're missing out on all the wonderful things to do in adventure mode. Yeah, that's great. There are definitely going to be a lot of people excited about being able to keep ranking up and getting those season rewards, even if they're in a, a custom world or a public world. Uh, so beyond progression, there's also 
a variety of new settings that are coming to Fallout Worlds. Um, can you shed some light on what players can expect from those? Yeah, um, we tried to add a couple things for everybody in this update. Um, we added some basic stuff for handling carry weight. So you will be able to increase, decrease, and manipulate uh, the maximum number of things you can carry. Uh, we had some heated conversations internally about how to actually manipulate that. So we ended up with two different settings. One of them that lets you apply a multiplier to your existing uh, max carry weight. That way it kind of increases or decreases the effectiveness of your build. And the other one, if you want more control, you can explicitly state what you want the max carry weight to be of everybody on your server, regardless of what their build is. Um, so if you wanted to set it to 999, you can. If you wanted to set it to 100, you can. Um, after that, we started adding uh, another dismemberment setting. So if you're, you know, if uh, blood going everywhere and chunks of people isn't quite your thing, uh, we added confetti, uh, just like the lunchbox effect uh, that will go off every time something would be would dismember. Um, for our more PvP and survival oriented players, we added the ability to disable uh, legendary and non-legendary perks as well as disabling both of them together so if you'd like to level the playing field or you'd like to just make the game harder you're more than welcome to do that now also we added the ability to disable vats but also to dis disable vats uh, explicitly against players um, one of the things pvp players have been complaining about is they don't want an aim bot just available in the game at all times this should allow them once again to lower the level the playing field a bit awesome and we've also got the object intersection um, setting. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so this one I'm really excited about. Um, we're adding this setting to uh, the existing relaxed building restriction setting. So it'll automatically be part of Happy Builder World whenever it comes back by as a public world. Um, basically, what we did is we got tired of trying to rebuild pieces of Appalachia and, you know, a board sticking up somewhere was getting in your way. You weren't able to place something because it was either intersecting with something in the world or something you'd already placed. So what this does is it up, upgrades the relaxed building restriction setting so that object intersection is no longer a problem. Um, if you weren't able to place something because it intersected with something else, you will now be able to place it as long as you can still select it after you placed it so that you can still delete it and move it and move it around, those kind of things. Um, we've also upgraded the UI a little bit so if you have this setting on, the toggle snapping setting in the UI when you're in the workshop has an extra feature added to it. Now it's more like toggle placement. Uh, it has snapping, it has collide, which basically is the same as snapping on and snapping off. And then we have a new one called free, which attempts to disable even more of the collision with other objects. So hopefully you can get things into more places and kind of line them up exactly how you want them while you're building things, um, whether that's intersecting stuff with your own objects or things already placed in the world. Awesome. I'm interested to see what the building community does with that and all the cool things they're going to create. Me too. And um, what about you? What are some of your favorite settings when you're running a custom world? You know, for me, it's always a good time to turn on the heavy ragdoll and the high jumping and turning off fall damage. Uh, and just kind of run around and smack things. Nothing nothing to me is kind of more fun than jumping off really tall things and kind of smacking things to the moon. Gotta love it when they go flying. I, you absolutely do. Thank you so much to everyone at home for tuning in today. And thanks, of course, to both you, Alice, and Bo for taking some time out of your busy days to talk with us about the Invaders from Beyond update. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, and I hope you all enjoy the invasion. Thank you, everyone, for your time. All right, now if you're interested in trying out the Invaders from Beyond update and you own Fallout 76 on Bethesda.net or Steam, you can join us right now in the public test server, try out Invaders from Beyond, check out the uh, Happy Builder public world, uh, and even some of the new Fallout First settings if you have Fallout First. Um, as I mentioned before, the Invaders from Beyond update launches in the live game on March 1st, and we'll see you then. Thanks for joining us.